Hi there, everybody. This is Kelly Jean Gettlefinger with Always Stampin' Videos. You can also find me on Instagram at always underscore stampin', no G on the end. And you can find me on Facebook at always stampin' with Kelly. So uh, thanks for joining me uh, here on my YouTube channel. Subscribe so that you won't miss any videos. I usually upload on Wednesdays. Um, most of my videos are 10 minutes or less. I like to keep my videos super short so that um, you have more time stamping instead of just watching. <laughs> so today's video is going to be a little different though. Um, someone recently asked me, um, they said they needed a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I said, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And then they asked me if I work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though Stampin' is my hobby, I love doing it. I actually consider this my job. Stamping is my job. So, yes, I work. And if you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'm your gal. So, um, you can actually visit my online store. And if you want any of the items that you see me use today or on my YouTube channel, you can visit alwaysstampinwithkelly.stampinup.net. Uh, for the month of July um, 2022, you can use this hostess code and I'll send you a special little thank you. So, yep, stamping is my job and I love what I do and I love to share what I love. <laughs> so, anywho, today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute accordion mini album gift card holder. That's what I'm calling it. So... It's so adorable. And so today's video is going to be a little different because I'm going to show you start to finish this entire project. Now, if you are familiar with my channel, you know, I usually show you the base of the project and that way you can stamp it up however you like. Um, pretty much most of the things that I stamp are very self-explanatory other than the foundation of a project. But today um, I want to show you how to create this super cute project start to finish. And so to give you a little taste of what my classes are like, I do instruct inline, inline classes, online classes. <laughs> um, I uh, haven't had a personal in, in studio class since 2020, 2020. Oh goodness. Now I can't even talk, uh, but I teach, um, online classes and I call them my cyber stamp club and my cyber stamp club classes. And so if you're interested, uh, today is going to be a little sampler of what I actually do in those classes. It's in a private, I do those in a private Facebook group and um, you can purchase from me or you can pay the class fee. It's up to you and uh, you can be a member and ongoing, you'll get benefits. Um, or you can just take one class at a time. It's totally up to you. They're a lot of fun and yeah, if you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'm your gal. So I do this for fun and I, sometimes I make a little money. <laughs> so anywho, here is the item we're gonna make. How cute is this, right? It's just so cute and so easy. I can't wait to show you how to create it. And these little um, cards, journaling cards come out. You could actually put gift cards in here. You could put one gift card in here and then keep all the other cards. Um, or vice versa. So aren't those cute? I just love them. I think this is probably one of the cutest projects I've done in a while. <laughs> Not that I don't like my projects. I wouldn't share them if I didn't. <laughs> but this one is just so cute. How about that, right? So I'm going to show you how to create this adorable accordion mini album gift card holder. Are you ready? All right, well, let's get started. I'll put these all back in. Now, typically for my classes, I sh I tell you ahead of time what you're gonna need. And that way, if you wanna place an order, great. Um, but if you already have those items, then you may not wanna place an order, so you can just pay the class fee. Um, but today, I'm not gonna show you what you need first. I'm just gonna do it as I go along. And that way, grab a notebook right now and you can take notes on the items that I use, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is the Stampin'. And um, I have actually started a little piece here um, and I'll explain this. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. It doesn't really matter what size it is. I'm gonna show you a little technique that I like to use with my dies when I am stamping a lot of items or a lot of images. And so 
I am using the True Beauty stamp set and I'm, use, I'm gonna use every single one of these images except one. So all of these images I'm gonna use on this project. And so what I like to do when I am using images that are gonna coordinate with dies is I will stamp them all on one sheet of cardstock so that I can run them through my uh, cut and emboss machine one time and then that's it. Uh, this one will need to go through twice simply because I there are, is only one die for the leaves here and so um, I will run it through twice. But anywho, I'll show you, kind of show you more um, as I get along um, with that. So today I am using the ink pads, just so you know. Um, Cajun Craze, Polished Pink, Mary Merlot, Granny Apple Green, and So Saffron. All right, so the rose here is stamped in So Saffron. Uh, the leaves and the stem here is Granny Apple Green. I already stamped these little flowers, but I want to show you how I did that because you can see they're two different colors, right? Within one image. So let me just show you really quickly how I did that. I used the So Saffron, loaded up with my So Saffron, and then I'm gonna bring in the Cajun Craze. And I just pick up a little bit. I am tilting this. I know you can't see it on the camera, but I'm only picking up just a little bit down there on the bottom. See that? And then I just take my finger. If you don't want to get your fingers inky, you can use a dauber or something. But I just blend the color together so that when I stamp it, it ends up looking like that. It's really a fun technique. And then I just actually run my finger into my stamp cleaner. Um, it's already wet and ready to clean, so I just clean my finger with it. All right, and then this one I wanted to show you, the bit, this big flower here. Um, I'm gonna stamp that first in polished pink. And then I'll come in with um, that smaller floral again, and I'm going to stamp that in the Mary Merlot. Now that, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to ink it up and stamp it right here on the flower. Just like that. So it kind of gives it a little... Um, center piece, if you will. Sometimes I've stamped it two or three times on there. I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So I'll ink it back up again and sort of tilt it and stamp it off to the side as well. So it looks like that. And then I will sometimes, depends on what the colors are, um, I'll come in with my Stampin' Right marker and um, because this is a darker color on a darker color, I'll, I'll use the brush tip and just add little dots here and there so that they look like the center of the flower. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean when I'm finished. So it looks like that. You've got those little speckled pieces down there. Yeah, it's just a fun way to add a little texture. Um, okay, so then I'm going to bring in this image here and show you how I'm stamping that. I'm going to use the So Saffron first. Just ink up the entire image. And then I've got my Granny Apple Green Stampin' Right marker. And I'm using, again, the brush tip. And I'm going to marker the stem so I'm not gonna let the marker touch the um, the yellow areas that I just stamped I call this technique marker focus because I am focusing on certain parts of the image with one marker at a time and so when I marker focus, it's a great way to add color and it makes it look like you actually 
drew the flower. All right, and then I'm bringing in my um, Cajun Craze Stampin' Right Marker, again, using the brush tip, and I'm gonna thump, this is called Marker Thumping. <laughs> I know the names are really funny, but um, this is this is an actual technique. The marker focus, I I just name it that because I don't know that there's really a name for it. But the thumping, I'm just tapping on certain areas of the tips of these flower images. And so this is an actual technique called marker thumping. <laughs> and then once I stamp it, I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like that. So you've got all those great colors there in one image. All right, clean that off. And then let's see. Um, I need, what do I need? I need your friend. So I'm going to stamp that. And that's going to be in Mary Merlot. bring it over here and it doesn't really matter if it's straight or not I'll show you why in just a minute I just want to get all of my stamping done as much as possible at the beginning of the video okay let's see what else do I need okay I'm gonna need the just the cause will put away the <laughs> Mary Merlot I'm gonna need that okay the just because I'm gonna Bring that over here and stamp it here. And I want to line it up with the bottom of my um, cardstock because I want there to be a little space here. I'll show you why in just a little bit, but I definitely want some space there on the just because. Okay. All right, and then I think that's all of my stamped images. So here's what I like to do. Um, I am using the coordinating dies that go with True Beauty. And so I will put this through my big, sh my big shot, it used to be my big shot, my uh, cut and emboss machine. And so the first thing I do is I, I will sandwich it. I'll go ahead and put it on my um, platform and get it ready to go through the paper to go through my cut emboss machine. And then I will layer all of these. Let's see, how do you go, sweetheart? There you go, I think, are you, are you happy with that? I don't, it doesn't, she doesn't feel like she's happy with it. <laughs> but I think that's, I don't know why that's not looking right to me for some reason. There it is, there she is, she's happy. She's a happy girl. Okay. And then um, I just layer all of these on. I'm showing you so that you get a better picture of what I'm talking about. Some of you probably have already got it and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Kelly, I got it. I got it. I will set this up and go ahead and lay it on my platform. I put every single one of the dies on that I can. If you have a magnet um, board that you use with your die cutting machine, that's comes in real handy with this particular um, technique but this way all I have to do is run it through one time and I'm done now, like I said I want two of these green leaves here so I will actually run this through twice just to get that green leaf okay so then I run that through and um, I come up with <laughs> Wow, wasn't that fast? I run that through. And so if you're not familiar with a um, die cutting machine, you can look that up on um, YouTube or just check out some of my other videos. I show you in some of my other videos. And so I come out with all of this all at once, um, which is great. It saves me so much time. And um, yeah, I can just make, make things a lot quicker. Okay, and then I also wanted to run through... Um, with these two images or dies um, with just plain cardstock. So I'm gonna need, if you're making this, you're gonna need one of these in granny apple green, one of these in granny apple green, and then that same image that I just showed you, you'll need one in balmy blue, okay? 
So here are all the images that you'll need, all the dies that you'll need. Let's set my dies aside. Um, okay, and then, so let's get those out of the way. And let's come back to the um, You're a True Friend and the Just Because. The You're a True Friend, you're gonna come in with your oval um, punches. I love this punch. It's a double punch, so you get two for one. So I try to always punch so that even if I'm not going to, like even if I don't need that white, which I don't right now, I can put it aside and use it later. Here's a little tip while you're punching. I barely hold it. I'm, I'm not going all the way through. I'm not making an indention. I'm just holding it slightly so that paper doesn't slip and that way I can see is that where I want it or do I want to move it I think I want to move it just a little bit and then I do it again okay yep that's where I want it so then I don't breathe I don't go I don't let go <laughs> some people will take a breath and they'll let go and then punch and it gets crooked I'm gonna go straight on down and that way my punch turned out perfect um, and then I've got this little white piece here that I can use somewhere else so I'll lay that aside and then come in with my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim the just because and here's what I'm going to do I want this to be trimmed so that it's pretty close to the top so I'm going to go ahead and trim it at the top first And I like that. That's good. I think that I'm happy with that. If you're not happy with that, you can, you know, restamp it and do it again. And now I want to come pretty close to the letter E as well. And then pretty close to the J. So that we end up with this. Okay, I'm going to lay that aside and show you what to do with that later um let's see here okay so now let's show you the base of well you know before we do that let's go back to the dies again i'm also using <laughs> i cannot remember the name of this die i said to myself look that up before you start making this video it's in the catalog i'll have to <laughs> I'll have to see if I can remember it and put it in the comments. Um, so, anywho, uh, I love this die. I love this die set. Uh, everything about it. Love it. So, there are six of these rectangle dies. And so, I count them. This is how I remember which one is which. And how, when I tell my customers um, which one to use, I will start from the inside and grow. Like a number, your numbers grow. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously, five is bigger than one. And so I start at the beginning, or start in the middle, and I grow with my dies. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And so we are using number three die. And you're gonna make four of these from, and again, through the cut and emboss machine. Actually, you're gonna make five. Um, I lied, you're gonna make six. <laughs> uh, you're gonna make one out of balmy blue, one out of uh, Blushing Bride, one out of Granny Apple Green, So Saffron. You're gonna make another one out of Blushing Bride. Oh, you know what? Looks like I have two different, looks like this might be Pink Pirouette, or, well, nope, not Pink Pirouette anymore. What is that one called? Anyway, it's supposed to be Blushing Bride. I like the way the Blushing Bride looks with this best, um, and I think that's one of the coordinating colors on the paper anyway. And then one of the polished pink. Okay, so you'll need six in all. And let's see here. I'm also using, and I'm gonna bring back the sample to show you this part. Um, I am also using, oh, good grief, you would think that I would look up these names before I start my video. <laughs> this border set here of dies. I like the size of this little scallop here better than I do this scallop for this part of my album, okay? So for the pockets, I used this tiny one here. All right, so let me just show you the difference up close, okay? 
So you can see the scallop on the frame here, this one, is a little bigger, a little wider, and um, the little um, serrated edge here is not as close to the scallop as it is on the um, on the on the border die. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so that's why I wanted this little I wanted this border set for that, and so I will show you a little tip on how to get that teeny tiny edge there as well. So let's put these away for the moment anyway. All right, and we're just gonna bring in the um, one of the Blushing Bride and one of the Polished Pink. Okay, so let's just use those for right now. And the paper trimmer comes in. And we're gonna trim this down just inside the serrated edge here, okay? So just inside that dotted line. So I am putting the dotted line to the right of my paper trimmer track and trimming that away. And not very much, I don't know, just like literally not even, is it once, maybe one sixteenth of an inch. So that just shows you kind of how much. And I'm just eyeballing it, to be honest. So I'm going to turn it and do it again. Oh, you know what? I actually meant to do the long. <laughs> you want to do the long side first. I should have done that. Oh, that's okay. I will. I'll work it out. So you're going to trim off all four edges, but you want to start with your first cut. You want it to be the long edge, the long, uh, I hope that makes sense. I should have made myself remember to do that. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so you've got this little piece here. And this is what goes here in the center. And that's going to be the front of your belly band. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that on. And you want to save all those little pieces. Um, that we just trimmed off. So, got my adhesive added and I'm just going to center that. So cute. I just love doing that. Trimming off those edges. It's just so cute. Um, okay, so now you've got all these little edges here. And so what you want to do with the edges is, um, so this long one here is the one that we're gonna use, and I should have trimmed it first because it goes on the blue. And I will use my um, liquid glue for this. Just gonna add that. You know what? Let's let's use this one since I'm, it's kind of symmetrical. Okay, so this is just going to go on the edge here. So it looks like that. Just to add a little color, a little pop of color to it. I think that's cute. And now these, I just want to show you what you can do with these. Um, let's see. Although one of those, hold on, bring in your just because um, image that we stamped, remember that? And we're gonna add one of the smaller ones, maybe, let's see, does that work? To, yep, mm-hmm. So again, with the liquid glue, cause I need a tiny, tiny bit here. And then I'm gonna add that little scalloped edge to the bottom of my just because. Now I actually trimmed mine up, but this actually centers so adorably that I might just I might leave it like that. I don't know. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Let me get it straight. Yeah, I'm gonna trim it up. I just need so. Anywho, I'm just going to turn it over and just trim that off a little bit so that it's even with my little tag.
And then this is what you get. Okay. And so this is what goes on the bottom of your so saffron tag or journaling card. Cute, right? Cute, cute, cute. All right, so I'm gonna lay that aside for right now. And then these two pieces here, I wanna show you what I like to do with my little, um, I, I just call these little borders. Um, and so this is a package that some Stampin' Up! something came in, little embellishments. I save all of my embellishment packages for this purpose. I love to um, save things that I, you know, I went through the trouble of creating this and I hate to just throw it away. So I, I will go back and I will use these little items. And so this is just a white piece of cardstock that I've trimmed down to coordinate into this bag fit into the bag and then I keep all of my little scraps that I can use on another card or another project some other time. And then I will store this um, in with all of my little embellish my Stampin' Up embellishments. So I've got a little tub that I keep my embellishments in and that's where that will go. So I hope you enjoyed that little tip. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our belly band and um, then I will get to the, the little journaling card. So the belly band is one inch by eight and a half inches okay and so i'm gonna i'm just gonna leave that right there for just a sec and go ahead and decorate this so we're gonna bring in our little yellow rose our stem with two leaves and the little blue balmy blue scalloped tag and then you are a true Friend. All right, so these are the elements for our belly band. The first thing I want to do is sort of see where I want to lay my rows so that I've got plenty of room for all of those and my, um, my little oval piece. Where are my dimensionals? Okay, I pop everything up twice so when i say that i double i, I call this double dimensioning <laughs> so i double dimension everything so i'm going to put on one layer of dimensionals come in and do another layer of dimensionals right on top of the ones that i just put on i personally just love the way this looks i think that it adds depth to your project and it's very eye-catching um, and they're so dimensionals are so inexpensive so we can afford to use several of those okay and then this rose is going to go on oops I must have stamped on the back of that one as well and I double dimension it as well now when I say I double dimension everything sometimes if I'm making a little portrait on my project I will um layer some dimensions some i will take note you know no dim dimensions and, and then some double okay so then i'll just put that there it's already so cute i absolutely love this stamp set love these colors um that all credit goes to stampin up they are so good about um picking colors coordinating colors and picking the right uh, designer series paper. That is one of the reasons why I decided to become a Stampin' Up! demonstrator 20 years ago. Uh, I love how everything matches. I love how everything coordinates. The reds all match the same red. I mean, you don't have any doubt. It just looks, makes my cards and my projects look professional. <laughs> so, I like that. I like it when people turn my card over and <laughs> when they get one and they think, did she make this? And then, you know, they find out, yeah, she sure did. All right, so I'm layering my you are a true friend and being quite the perfectionist because I don't want it to be crooked. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking me just a second. There we go. All right. And this is going to go here. And I'm gonna tuck it under 
that little leaf there. So I want the rose to look like it's um, kind of hanging out with <laughs> this tag. Oh, there we go. Cute, right? Okay, so lay that aside. And now we're gonna get to the belly band. So um, we can't get to the belly band <laughs> until we get the actual album done. All right, so let's decorate these really quickly and then we'll get to the base of the album. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna bring in all my other elements that I trimmed out with the cut and emboss machine. And let's see here, get them all laid out so that you can see them, so that I can see them and know what's next, what's first, what's last. Okay, so that's everything. All right, and so the first thing I'm going to do is um, this big flower. I will um, add my. I'm going to add my my leaves first. Okay, so for this one. I want some, I want all of the leaves showing here, but then I only want one of the leaves showing here. So see how I just tucked in that leaf back there? I'm gonna add adhesive uh, just to the edge of this one. And then to this whole leaf here. So you can see, I think it'll shimmer maybe yep there you go did you catch that so first I'll put the two leaves on <laughs> they're stuck to my mat oh goodness <laughs> okay um, so the two leaves go on first I'm gonna tuck those into the upper right hand corner let's see where do I want it do I want it to look like that I think I do yeah okay and then this one here I just want to see that one leaf so there it is maybe just a little less oh, it's so cute and then i'm going to add dimensionals to the back of this and yes i am going to double dimension it again and once i get that on this is going to go on to the, hmm, I think, what color does this one go on? The Blushing Bride. So we'll put this just down here in the corner. And it's okay if some of it hangs off the edge just a little bit because you've got room. Um, you've got some wiggle room in your pocket for these little, um, for these little journaling cards. If you did not want to use the um, frames, the little scallop frames, if you just wanted to make journaling cards for this, then you would just trim three by four inches. Now, three by four is exactly what this is, what the pocket is, so it might be a tiny bit snug. You may wanna trim your journaling cards down just a, like one sixteenth of an inch from three by four and that would fit those pockets perfectly. So, but I just love how these little scallop frames um, fit those pockets perfectly. This is a perfect little journaling card, right? Okay, now, so for the So Saffron, we're going to add these two cuties and I'm using mini glue dots um, and you don't really need a lot. I think I'm just gonna add three of them, three mini glue dots. So one kind of at the top and then one on each side here. That's it, you don't really need a lot. I'm gonna put the blue on first and have it sort of look like this. There we go. And then the green. After I did this in the colored cardstock, I thought, you know, this die might have looked really pretty in the um, uh, the designer series paper. So 
But just imagine how that might really pop this here, these two items here, um, if I used the designer series paper, but that's okay. I, I didn't, so that's all right. Okay, and then my little label is gonna go down at the bottom, the just because, and I am going to pop it up again with double dimensionals. Yep, mm -hmm, you guessed it. <laughs> I told you I do this to just about everything. I love the way it looks. And then too, sometimes when I'm mailing a card, um, if I only use one set of dimensionals, sometimes they, they get so smashed in the mail that you might as well have not even used dimensionals. So I like to really pop it up. And so you see how that little pink scallop coordinates with the bottom of that journaling card, right? It's just so cute how just, you know what, I'm gonna move it up just a tiny bit because I want to see some of that, I wanna see more of that yellow. So. There we go. I just think that's so cute. I love it. All right, so that's done. And we'll move on to, let's do the green one. The green one just gets this little piece right here. Double dimensioned, yes. And I'm only gonna put my dimensionals in two areas. I, I don't really use a lot of dimensionals um, as far as like how many places I put them. Uh, so if you just give it two areas to anchor, usually that's enough. Sometimes one is not enough. It'll, your image will start being wobbly, but, um, okay. So I want this one to kind of hang off the edge there a little bit. You see that? So I love, I just love that. I love how that looks. And then for the blue, we've got these two little flowers here and this little image here. Um, for this one, I'm gonna use my um, liquid glue and I'm just gonna put little dots on each one of those little circles. I don't know what you call those. Like in real life, like I don't know what you would call, <laughs> call those on flowers. So I'm gonna put this kind of at the top here like this. Press that down good. And then I'm going to add double dimensionals to one of my little flowers. And so, like I said, if you're watching and you're staying with me for this video, <laughs> um, it's a lot longer than most of my other videos. Uh, so this is what a typical class would be like if you stamped with me in my group. And that way you've always got access to the videos for as long as you're a member of my Cyber Stamp Club. Um, and you can go back and watch, rewatch the videos as many times as you like. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, you can pause the videos, you can watch live and then you can rewatch and pause the videos however many times you like. Um, and take notes or make it with me while, you, and you get a kit. I send you, I would send you everything you need for this kit, except the stamps, the tools, and uh, that's it. I send you all the paper already pre-cut, pre-scored. Um, I send you all the embellishments and yeah, so it makes it so easy um, to be a member of my Cyber Stamp Club. All right, so now let's see. I'm going to put these little flowers up here. How did I have them in this one? Yes, they are sort of upside down. And so, you know what? I want this the double dimensional one to be up here like this. There we go. All right, I'm not a fan of how that looks, so I'll probably change that. I'll probably go back and put the other one there later but anywho you get the idea okay so those are all done how cute are those right and now we're ready for the actual base project the base part um and this is you're just gonna wig out at how easy this is <laughs> so bring in your paper trimmer and i am using stampin ups 12 by 12 paper trimmer which is literally the best on the market at least that's my opinion um i love it so much uh so okay the first thing that we're going to do we've got a piece of the designer series paper that is called a wash in beauty it is part of the suite 
that goes along with the True Beauty stamp set. So that True Beauty stamp set that I showed you earlier, this is part of a suite that you can order from Stampin' Up. And like I said, if you go to my website, always Stampin' with Kelly, dot stampin' up dot net um you can order any of these items this is the hostess code that i'm using for july so when you use that i will send you a special little thank you who knows i might even send you this accordion mini album gift card holder <laughs> so this is one of the papers so beautiful check this out i'm going to show you the entire 12 by 12 piece here it is how beautiful is that right so when you trim this in half at six inches, six inches by 12 inches, this is what you get. And you're gonna put the paper in your trimmer. Now listen, if your designer series paper has no direction to its pattern um, on either side, it doesn't matter which way you put it in the trimmer, okay? Uh, but because this does have a pattern that is going a particular direction, I start by putting the bottom, the, the lower part of my um, image to the right. So I want to score this at, um, first I'm gonna score it at four inches on the left, okay? So <laughs> I know that's kind of confusing. If, if your pattern paper goes in a direction, you want the bottom of the direction in your trimmer towards your left, I'm sorry, towards your right. And then you wanna bring the left side to four inches and score it, score it there at four inches. And then you're gonna move this side to, oh, let's see here, one, no, three quarter inch, okay? So this is what I love about Stampin' Up's paper trimmer there is one and a half inches on the right side of my track. So I'm not holding on to a little bitty piece over here. Um, it just makes it so much easier. So score it at four inches on the right, on the, oh, good grief, <laughs> on the left side of your paper trimmer, score it at three quarter inches on the right side of your paper trimmer track, all right? And then you're gonna quarter turn, and it doesn't matter which quarter turn you make, you're gonna quarter turn, open up your leg or your arm of your paper trimmer and score at every three inches. So we've got three, six, and nine. All right, we're done with our paper trimmer for a little while anyway, I think. And then, so now here, we're just gonna fold it up on that four inch line and we're gonna fold it down on the three quarter inch line. That's it, okay, that's it. So I'm gonna bring in a bone folder and flatten that. Flatten all of it. And then on the three inch, every three inch um, fold, I'm gonna, Go ahead and fold our scores. I'm going to fold that as well. And then here's where I like to kind of like I control my paper. <laughs> I like to line it up and make it match. And then once I make it match, it might be buckled a little bit, but I'm going to bring in my bone folder and I'm going to make that paper obey. <laughs> All right. And so I'm going to add uh, one strip of adhesive here on this fold and just go all the way down with it. There we go. No more adhesive. You don't need any more adhesive. You really wouldn't even need that adhesive. Um, it actually stays down, but um, I, I did it anyway. So, okay, and then here, these pieces here are the ones that I ran through with my border um, dies. Remember I showed you my border dies, this one here. And that's what I trimmed these out with. Now what I like to do is I will take my scraps and I, I measure however, you know, 
um, wide my pocket is, which is, if this is three inches. So I will get three inch pieces, let's pretend this isn't here. <laughs> I'll get three inch pieces of um, cardstock. I actually save all of my scraps and then once a year I go through them and clean them out and get rid of the rest of them. So if you're interested in scraps, let me know because <laughs> I love to give them away. I don't, I don't like to throw them, but as a demonstrator, I have way too many. Uh, so anywho, I will go through and trim that to three inches and then I'll go one at a time and put this, uh, put these through um, the cut and emboss machine. Then once I have all four of these pieces like this, with, you know, a little bit, it can be even be bigger than that. It doesn't have to be, or you can just do one, you know, long piece and just keep doing, doing this. Then I trim this down to one quarter. So one quarter of an inch. I just put that in there and give it a trim. And that's how I come up with those teeny tiny pieces. Okay. So... This is going to take the um, liquid glue again. And so I'm just going to add liquid glue to the edge of my pockets. And I'm just going to go along all of these right here. I'm just adding a teeny tiny bit because, wow, this glue literally will last you forever. At least it does for me. And I'm a demonstrator, so you know I'm going through it. Okay, and then I put on each piece just like that on my pockets. I absolutely love this little, this little project. I hope you like it. I thank you so much for being here. Um, I don't know if I said this at the beginning of the video. Yeah, the gal that was like, do you work? <laughs> so um, I really appreciate uh, my customers. Uh, I don't make a lot of money. I don't have a lot of customers, but um, I make enough to be able to stay a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and not have to <laughs> spend my my quarterly quota uh, all by myself. So, all right, so there's the pocket. You can see how that turned out, right? And then this just folds here like this. Now, when I do that, look what happens. Some of these kind of squirt it out. So I'll just come in and um, trim those little doodads off. Um, yeah, looks good to me. There we go. Okay, so now for the belly band. All right, we're bringing back that one inch by eight and a half inches. And this just wraps around, and I like to just let it start over here at the edge and wrap it all the way around. Just like that. And then I'm going to add adhesive to the back of this piece right here. Okay. All right. So, and I like to put it on before I adhere it down. That way I've got, I know I've got plenty of room. Okay. There it is. And then I'm using this beautiful, um, what is it called? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I should know my names. Um, I don't know. It's, fr it's just a frayed ribbon. I think it's what it's called in the catalog. Um, it's so beautiful. You can actually dye it to whatever color you want it to. Um, and you should dye it, right? <laughs> Santa Claus. Uh, so I'm going to bring it over here like this and tie it on, but I am actually going to adhere it. So I'm gonna put some adhesive on the back. And so I'm also gonna put it here so it's easier to tie. So I've got it on and then I leave it, I like, to, so I can't tell you how much I'm using because I like to leave my ribbon on my roll um, and that way I know I've got plenty. I can just trim down whatever I don't use. So I'm gluing that on. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the front, add some adhesive. 
and then I'm just tying it in a knot. I may have not given myself enough. It's probably fine. And if it's not, I can always see that's when, if it's not enough, then I can take it off and just lengthen it. I think this is going to be good though. And then I'm just going to trim it up. So cute. So cute. All right. So now we're going to bring back our featured piece that we made earlier for the belly band, right? And I am using dimensionals. So um, I feel like the dimensionals have stuck pretty well to this ribbon. Um, but I'm actually going to use quite a few. Oh, look, <laughs> must have used that for something else. So I want to make sure I get it in the center. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that. You can measure it if you want to, but I'm okay with eyeballing it. And so I'm going to line this whole thing with dimensionals so that it's good and sticky. And I'm not going to double dimension this. I don't think I did on the other one. Oh, these are these are being tricky. <laughs> Moving the uh, protective piece on the other side of those dimensionals. And then just going to put this on here. Like that. And then it's ready for our journaling cards oh one more thing i almost forgot uh the mary malo you know what i'm actually doing this with my mary malo marker um so i have the little image that says with love and i'm only going to um, marker the love and the love is gonna go so this is called omitting I am omitting the with, the word with. And the love is going to go here in the center. And it's okay if it's crooked. I don't mind this being, these little words being crooked because they're in the garden. So they're like little word bugs. They're little, they're little word bugs. Um, okay, and so here, this one here for you always. I just want to marker the always. I am using the brush tip, the brush tip of my Stampin' Right marker. Okay, and then always is gonna go here at the beginning. Look how cute that is. Love it so much. Love, love, love this sweet. Okay, and then the next word is true. Um, this one is this one here. You are a true friend, so I'm only going to marker the word true and omit everything else. And that word will go here. I actually like how it's crooked. <laughs> there you go. And then the last word is going to be always. So I'm going to marker just the word always. Oh, did I say always friend? Good grief. <laughs> it's getting late here, so I'm kind of tired. Okay, so then friend is going to go here. Always love true friend. So cute, so cute. Now we're ready to bring in our journaling cards. And let's see, we've got our little blue one here and our pink one. And then the yellow and the green. I'm gonna fold that up 
and out. You know what? I almost forgot one more thing here. I'll put this on and then show you. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is put on some little embellishments. So these are the Fine Sparkle Adhesive Backed Gems. And I found that I feel like these light blue ones here just match perfectly um, with the balmy blue. So let's put that those on. So I'm going to put a little one here and then a big one here at the bottom and another little one right next to my big one. There we go. So cute. I absolutely <laughs> love this project i hope you like it um i can't wait for you to make it uh leave me the leave me something in the comment and tell me who you're going to be making this for or what you're going to be making maybe it's you're making it for you um that's one of the reasons i stamp i love making treasured little keepsakes for myself and um, i will use this as a photo album to add in some of my um, easter pictures from this past easter so there you go. And if you want more information about my cyber stamp clubs, like I said, private message me on Facebook or Instagram or leave me a comment here and I will try to get back with you. Bye everybody.